Um, thank you, uh, Kia, for taking time out of your day. We're here to talk about uh, Marmalade. Uh, this is your directorial debut, is that right? Indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, well, congratulations on congratulations on that. Um, but I guess we should probably get the you know to go back to the beginning. How did this you know this idea come about, and what was it about this story that made it you know, made you want it to be the the first story that you told? You know, I mean, I've I've been an actor for twenty plus years now, and I think I I, I always struggled when people asked me the question. You know, if you could play any character, what would you play? And um, I, I just never had an answer for that because I, I, you just wait for for scripts to come in that other people have uh, have written, and uh, and you know you decide about those characters. So I finally took it to task and and thought, well, if I could play any character, what would I play? Or if I could create any characters, what would I create? Um, and so that was the first kind of kernel of this is that I sort of coming coming up with these characters, uh, and then. Um, you know, trying to figure out what, what are films that I love. There are the films of the 80s and 90s, this kind of big pulpy films. I love a good heist. Um, I love the Bonnie and Clyde sort of genre. So, um, you know, it's kind of how can I meld all these things together and see if I can create a, uh, create a script here. So just sort of worked on that, chipped away at that for about five years. And um, here we are now. I mean, it always, you know, amazes me. Like people, they see a film and they think, oh yeah, you know, oh, it was right. you know filmed a couple of months ago. And, but, you know, it's five years. That's a long time to commit yeah. to, you know, doing this. I'm guessing that must have, the story must have gone through a lot of, a lot of changes over, over that time. It did. I mean, you know, as they say, writing is just rewriting because, you know, that's what it, it's, 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 it's a, it's a process of, you know, I mean, I guess I was I was happily surprised. I went back and read the first draft of it uh, just recently, thinking that, oh, my gosh, it's going to be just horrendous. And it was like so long ago. But it's actually there's full scenes that still uh, remain, you know, all the way up to in the film now. So it's it is amazing how your initial instincts, I think, um, are, you know, that you should stick with certain things, although you need to know when to sort of rewrite and restructure along the way so there was certainly a lot of that going on and were there any sort of like films or stories that you look to in particular for influence I mean for me it kind of had a bit of a a one night at McCall's kind of vibe to it in, in a weird oh. sort of way yeah I mean there was you know my kind of the big ones for me were like Raising Arizona True Romance uh, the usual suspects, Edward Scissorhands a little bit, you know, I, I sort of like, I always loved these sort of like wild and whimsical worlds that were still, you're like, are we in reality or are we not? And sort of bouncing back and forth. So that was, that was kind of always my compass was to, was to, you know, how much can we sort of like push, push it to be in this kind of like weird, whimsical kind of almost Tim Burton-esque uh, Coen Brothers sort of world um, where, you know, inherently, I think you find a lot of uh, comedy in that as well, but, you know, in some dark comedy, and then you can sort of bounce back and forth between what is real and what isn't. And that's, that becomes part of the storytelling. And as much as it does have this sort of like heist element in that, it's actually quite, a, quite an intimate film in a way, you know, there's not many, there's not many characters. So how did you go around casting it? Because with it being, you know, such a small cast, you know, if you've got one loose link the whole thing pulls apart yeah I mean that's exactly right it's it's these these characters I wanted to um write were quite rich and sort of you know they're, they're quite specific these characters right you can't um just get any actor in the world so it was a blessing and a curse because it was sort of the lists were quite small about which actors we could really like focus on um Joe Keery like immediately came to mind for Baron just you know, he's obviously still in the early stages of his career, but it's, there's something about his work that I just thought there, there, he's just, there's always a truthfulness on screen and, and, and he has such an inherent sort of charm and um, sweetness to him that I thought was perfect for Baron. Um, you know, Joe had never done a, an accent on screen up till that point. So we I sent it to him and and luckily he responded to it and um you know he had been looking for something like this that wasn't you know he was getting offered a lot of roles that were like Steve from Stranger Things so was, you know I think he was pleasantly surprised that someone was thinking about him outside of that uh, outside of that box 
so we work together and, you know, luckily I think he just really, you know, committed to it and it's going to show him in a, in a very different light. Um, similar as well with Camilla. I was, I was aware of her work. I'd seen her in a film called Mickey and the bear. That was just like, she, you know, it's one of those roles where you go, who is that? You know, it's just really, she has, um, uh, just a, a, a magnetism. I mean, there's something about it. So we we read her for the role and it was like, it was a no brainer. I mean, to me, she was just exactly, she was marmalade, you know, she brings this sort of like dangerous, magnetic, electric, um, uh, you know, quality to the, to the role that's required. And, um, you know, the last piece of the puzzle was like, how is their connection going to be, you know, is, is there going to be, um, some chemistry there and you know luckily I think you just if, if you hire good actors um, and you you sort of follow the the storylines it's um you know you're gonna find some some chemistry there and luckily that was the case here and like you say it is very different to Steve from Stranger Things I mean I think the fact that I think the fact that Joe managed to have Steve from Stranger Things in series one be like this awful character and then yeah. you know by the yeah. end of the second and third series you know fans are willing to like lay right. down you know to say you know yeah. to save him and that says a lot about him but I think it's really interesting that the projects that he's gravitated towards outside of Stranger Things haven't been I mean he's got to have like Marvel and people knocking at his door in some capacity so it's you know it's, it's really nice to see that there are these young actors who aren't getting sucked up into sort of that big Hollywood machine they still want to you know, seek out art and tell and tell proper stories. Yeah, certainly. I mean, that was that was part of our goal was like, it, you know, finding someone who is on that on that level, but is still game to do a small film like this and to sort of swing for something that's you know, it's a pretty wild character to 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 really go for it and and to have there be a reality to it as well. And so, you know, thankfully again, Joe was like at that perfect level right now and and that he was um looking for something like this. And with your you know music with your background in acting, how did that help you as a as a director? Because I think a lot of directors struggle sometimes to communicate with the actor so it must be kind of like a nice like one up on on those guys having that experience of being in front of the camera as well yeah I mean it helped immensely I mean it, exactly like you said I think most first-time directors their biggest hurdle is um is directing actors and that was that was the one thing that I knew that I had in my back pocket you know I mean I've been a a working actor for 20 plus years now. So I've been on a ton of different sets from TVs to films to short films and, and done plays as well. And so I, I've, wor I've also worked with a ton of different directors, you know, different styles. And I've seen sort of what has worked for me or what hasn't. Um, and then the other the other massive thing with that is is working with different actors. I've I've seen different processes. I've seen what people respond to from directors and what they don't. And you know, everyone has their own way of working. So I, I knew that I would have to kind of shift a little bit here and there. You know, this note might work for this actor, but will be a foreign language to this other actor. So it's kind of, you know, you're you're finding different ways in. Um so that 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 I knew was uh was going to be pretty secondhand for me. The, the 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 things that I didn't know about were pre-production, I never get to see as an actor, or post-production, you know? So those were really fascinating to me. I mean, obviously, pre-production is just preparation and just, you know, I knew this world and these characters and this script so well, so it was just really kind of communicating that to the different departments to really, you know, and 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 just having communication and collaboration to 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 make sure that we were all making the same film. And then the post-production was like, do we have a film here? You know, we have all this footage and it's like, oh, wow, it's really interesting what you can do with different people's performances or, you know, with sound design or music and things like that. You know, it's, um, it can shift a little bit, but it's, it's how can we retain sort of what we set out to do? I mean, there is that saying, isn't there, that, you know, you sort of, you make a film three times when you write it, when you film it, and then when it comes together in the edit. So it's, you're sort of looking at, you know, that script and then sort of the final thing that's come through the edit is, you know, is it, is, is it still the same? Is there, is there much difference? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is strange. I remember one of my producers who said, you know, you haven't gone through this part of the process before, but I will tell you when you leave 
the last day of shooting, and then when you have your first day of editing is going to be a very bizarre experience because the shooting of the film is not only, oh, I'm capturing this film that I wrote, but it's also, it, it it's, it's ingrained with the whole experience, which was, oh yeah, it was raining that day and we had to, you know, hold up an umbrella over the actors so you didn't see the rain or, oh my gosh, my gosh. Uh, Joe was really hungry that day and, and was a bit foggy. And so we had to get him some food, you know, so it's like, you're, you're seeing all these things with the footage that just, that the audience will never actually see, you know, it's just, it's all your memories are just, um, you know, entwined with it. So part of that is when you get in the edit is letting all of that go. And then just seeing the footage for what it is, which is like, that's all you have. You just have this and that's what the audience is going to have. So it's sort of like this letting go of the, of the actual process of making it and then building the film. So that, I mean, that was fascinating. I mean, it sounds like you had, like, you know, it was an experience that you really enjoyed doing. Are you hoping to you know, sort of continue down the directing route still? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was, you know, I I'm, I'm well versed in like how, how a set works, you know, just from being an actor and understanding different departments and things, but sort of being at the helm of it and having a lot more control was um, was really invigorating. I mean, it was really satisfying and and I felt sort of, um, you know, it, it, it felt natural. So I, I, would, I would absolutely love to, to jump in there again. And obviously Marmalade is going to be coming out in, in February. Um, why should people, you know, take a chance on this other than you know the Stranger Things fans are going to be coming for Steve but why why should you know why should people take a chance on your film I mean I think it is you know hopefully I, I set out to make something that's sort of reminiscent of the sort of really fun wild escapist 90s films um, and you know I think it's just it's it's an entertaining film that um, uh, you know that I think a wide variety of audience will will really enjoy well, I wish you best of luck with the uh, with the release. Thanks, Kat. Appreciate it. Thank you. And she yeah. she behaved like, normally. Yeah. Like normally, <laughs> I think this this is what I normally have, and I'm like, can I see the person? Uh, so yes, thank you, thank you so much for for thank taking time you. out. I think the film's great. Like I said, it reminded me of like One Night in McCall's and oh, uh, a couple of a couple of other films, like Wild Things, but without you know the the Neve and, and Denise sort of thing. Yes. It's... <laughs> exactly. There you go.